This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Start, we have like not a ton to do at this meeting, but like a few like important things. We're going to talk about the workday on Saturday and um, the um, the possible land surveying for the maps. And then I got a couple notes. Um, Mark reminded me that we need to talk about people uh, stealing or like community yeah. members. Um, it's okay. Doing things with the taking vegetables and then um karen also brought up adding some more stuff to the city website and sorry i just got distracted because margie says um she's having trouble connecting um but hopefully she'll get it working here in a second so um anyone want have any comments they want to start off the meeting with Argument again. Cool. No worries. Stephen, I think that you are on here twice, or we can hear um, talking in the background of your um, computer, of your, I, you know, whatever. Your little, your little screen has talking. <laughs> I, you know, they left I'm trying to figure out. I can't mute Stephen, so I'll just. Yeah, who, yeah, who's talking? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's Stephen, but I can't, obviously can't hear us or else I feel like it would. Oh, there he goes. He muted it. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So, um, last month's minutes um i'd like to propose a motion to um certify those minutes um anyone second awesome eric seconds that all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. great <laughs> um and now the treasure it's ted's ted's moment okay um you have the report for October. <laughs> it's and uh, I went to City Hall and I ch I checked on where they had our accounts to to check it against mine, and um, so I came up with a with a difference, <laughs> oh, no. which I have put in the revenue because they think we have more than I think we have, or thought we have. Um, and it, it's possibly due to uh, the timing when I first received the information and they told me what, what was there and whether all transactions uh, or the timing of transactions, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but I went back ever since I've been doing this and I ha I checked every transaction uh, that I have information on. I assume maybe I shouldn't, but uh, pretty much that I have received everything I'm supposed to receive. And I came up with uh, being the uh, $69.09 difference. Um, and during the course of checking on those transactions, I did uncover one mistake, uh, probably a typographical error, um, a 30 cent, we actually spent 30 cents more uh, with Flory's outdoor power equipment than I had originally reported, that's been duly noted. Um, so uh, as, as far as I can tell, uh we're in in pretty good shape i i sort of started by by coming in the back door they told us what the total was i saw what our purchase orders were and then i figured out how much 
was unallocated. That was to, uh, well, the garden year 22. And uh, so something in there might have uh, gone a little bit uh, off. I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't been able to identify anything. Uh, but they told us, or the, the figures I have from their reports, their financial reports, are that we have a total of uh, $3,010.27 in the garden account. And um, we have $277.44 in our combined petty cash accounts, what Sarah has and what I have. And uh, I would, uh, if anybody has any questions, please ask. Yeah, I, I do, Mark. Uh, my, excuse me, my camera isn't working, so I'm just going to talk. <laughs> sure. um, so, yeah, this looks very promising, Ted. Um, question I have is, do we have any other anticipated expenses before the end of this garden year? Or is the 3000 real figure? I for our balance uh, going forward, I I expect that we will have we will have to pay uh, uh, Broadbrook for shutting shutting off the uh, the water last year. It happened in November, and there was about a hundred and fifty dollar charge. I don't know if they'll charge more this year. Everything seems to go up a little a notch, uh, and uh, that that would take me to another question I have if after this and that is um, I can certainly uh, do monthly reports and we can just send them out uh, at least a November report and uh, any time that I know yeah, that awesome. we've had a transaction either money in or money that has to go out I can give a report for that month otherwise I'll stop reporting until we, we start up again. Probably February is, is usually when uh, we make our first report, February or March, depending upon how things are going. Um, but I'd be happy to just keep track of that, and then I can send it out um, or send it to Sarah, <laughs> and, yeah. and then you can uh, make sure it gets out to everybody. Yeah, especially if there's any change, any awesome. changes, any expenses that are going to be incurred between yeah, now uh, and then. Yeah, unless somebody knows of any expenses or is holding on to any receipts. Um, well, I should remember, Karen, <laughs> uh, you were going to do something with Flurry Lumber. We were going to get some lumber uh, for November. And... Uh, so that we might have those expenses. Um, so I'm not sure how much that will be to to put up uh, at least three more um, raised beds in the pollinator garden. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that came under 200. Okay, so if we're talking 200 there and possibly 150, 175 for... Uh, Broadbrook, you know, we're still on, we're under four hundred dollars, which is, uh, I have, uh, I'm in the process of doing a a whole report so that we can uh, uh, look at our expenditures. But this year we, uh, so far we've spent about in the neighborhood of eight hundred and sixty dollars. Last year we were just under seven hundred dollars in expenditures. Our incomes were pretty much the same for each year. So we have spent more this year. And if we had another $400, we're almost going to be um, not quite doubling what we spent last year. So I think we. Well, what, what's, what's our income been, Ted, the last, this year and last year? It's about the $800. So it, it's balancing out what we've spent, basically. It's break even, would you say? Uh, last year we're a little under. Uh, this year we're we could be uh, say four hundred dollars over. So uh, okay. that's half our income, or the equivalent of the income. 
Uh, it's not something that yeah. we can keep sustaining, but uh, we have been improving our um, uh, infrastructure, yeah. so yeah. to speak. Yeah, it's been a hefty uh, summer for projects, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but but some of these are one-time expenditures. Exactly, yeah. For well, Yeah, for five to six to eight years, maybe. Uh, and we, we have a lot of new hoses, and uh, I, I know Mark got the uh, the best of hoses. Uh, best we can so, find. <laughs> and we, we did spend uh, we we spent some uh, some cash on on that uh, on the hoses. So uh, and that was necessary. Uh, the only things uh, that we I guess really have to be concerned about. Uh, would probably be our, our equipment, lawn mowing equipment and so forth, if we ever need to do anything about that. So yeah. we can figure out how we would fund those things. Uh, and, and well, it's good to know. Oh, go ahead, Mark. I was gonna say the equipment doesn't need any maintenance between now and next spring, does it, Ed, or anybody? I don't know, Frank would know that. Okay. Um, I, we did, we had to, a fairly large maintenance bill last year. Um, it was just under three hundred dollars. This year, we we didn't have anything with them um, that was reported to me or that we paid for. So, um, unless something has changed in the meantime, um, at least one of the weed whackers could use some professional help. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. John's the weed whacker uh, committee chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we have an account with Florida Equipment, correct? Uh, yes. So, yeah. so if Jonathan yeah, or Frank someone is, wanted, wanted Frank to take is usually in, taking care of that. I, I know that he's uh, he still has me to get me something for gas for the uh, for the equipment. It's probably in the neighborhood of twenty dollars. That'll come out of petty cash. So, uh, and I'll I'll email Frank about the weed whacker and see uh, what, and he he'll probably take care of taking it to get repaired or whatnot. Um, okay, I think uh, and and Jonathan's expert at those machines too. He might want to join in and get involved <laughs> with Frank on that. The more the merrier. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I'm excited for our, you know, February, March meeting to now that we know about how much we spend regularly, plus like what some of these bigger projects end up costing us. I think we'll be able to plan like what projects we can invest in a little more clearly at the beginning of next summer, if there is anything um, like, you know, give some of these, if we have a project, give it a budget. Um, yeah, I will give you a report come February, the beginning of the year, of exactly where our expenditures were for last garden year and yeah. this garden year. And then we can Amazing. look at that, as I say, because some expenditures were, were somewhat the same, um, and then some you know, were higher on the maintenance last year than this year higher on purchasing equipment or um, building materials this year than last year, that, that type of thing. So we can look at where the expenditures have been um, and then if you want to set up a firm budget or yeah. at least talk about where we want to be, uh, we can probably do that uh, in February. That's that's yeah, awesome. That that's really exciting. But great if we could great put the expenditures down in advance and kind of you know anticipate any increases because that's going to float into what we should be charging for membership. I think we've talked yeah. about this before. If it's going up, yeah. if most things are going up, it, it may well be the time to add you know another five dollars a a membership or something onto that for uh, for this year or something like that. Certainly, we have plenty of cash in the bank, so there's no worry about any, you know, capital expenditures at this point. But looking forward. 
Yeah. Yeah. We we definitely have enough to get get started or finish up the year and get started next year. So, yeah. Right. So right. nice piggy bank. <laughs> yes. Right. Fabulous. Should we move acceptance of the report? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I move to accept the report as presented by Ted. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Aye. Awesome. And next is operations. Um, but Frank isn't here. Um, Mark, do you have anything that you would want to say or? Uh, not really. I, I think I've said before it would, you know, a good thing would be to do an inventory, and this might be the great time or very soon. Oh yeah. Of our equip, our, our equipment in the shed. Do we have everything we need, or do we, you know, as we plan ahead of the next year, are there things, you know, rakes, hose, small stuff, you know, that we want to. That's a great uh, idea. At? I mean, I, the hoses look to be you know, in pretty good shape, and uh, I've heard no complaints about people not having adequate hosing. So, um, and Frank would know about the lawnmowers and what their condition is. And then the whole thing with the, uh, the weed whackers, I, I agree with Jonathan, they should be serviced regularly. And we need to have a short training day where more than just Jonathan knows how to work the weed whackers. <laughs> He's a great guy, but I think we need uh, some training. So I, I, I would move that we do that uh, sometime in the, uh, in the future, maybe in the spring. Sounds good. Awesome. And then I guess the other announcement is um, probably that the water is going to be turned off at some point would probably be an operations um, update. But I think Stephen usually contacts them or I can this year. I've still never. I, I did. Oh, you already did. Great. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, anyone else have some operations questions? questions or anything or ideas awesome all right cool we'll move on to outreach with um, margie and eric well i don't have much to um report um there's two and a half plots open um Alyssa had left her plot I think that was A6. Linnea left her half a plot, which is half of A7. And Andre and Mark, um, who were in B10, told me that they're not coming back. So we have two and a half plots open, open and three people on the waiting list, none of whom want half a plot. So they would like to wait until there's a full plot. So. I might get in touch with two of them to see if they want to begin now and then they can um, pay, they can send in the application and pay next season like we did last year. Sounds um, amazing. If they wanna, yeah, if they want to get started doing something with the soil, there's, there's still time. So there's nothing else really I have to report. Well, that's, a, that's exciting. We've got um, some people on the wait list about to come into the garden. I love it. All right. And Eric, do you have anything? Nope, nothing to report. All right. Um, I'm just Sorry. emailing you really quick, Margie. Pardon me? Oh, oh Sarah, I'm I was just going to say at some... Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's at some point... It would be good to have a discussion about the future of the donation garden because it was not very well um, operated this year. And I'm kind of wondering if that's something that we want to discuss, whether we want to continue to do it. How do we make sure that it's a bigger success? Um, I, I just, I'm throwing it in there, but you can inject it into the budget. I mean, into the uh, agenda whenever you want to. Awesome. No, I was thinking the same thing. Um, I just have my, the, We'll do path maintenance and then the donation garden report would be after that. So we can, we can kind of talk about it then. Um, just before I forget, okay. I am emailing Margie right now, someone who's 
joining on um, working on a plot. I'm um, sorry, what, what yeah. are you emailing me? Um, Sarah Smith has a plot and Skylar Lloyd is going to be um, uh, joining her in uh, that plot. So I'm just going to CC him and send you his email. Okay, so are they in the garden together? Yes, or yeah, they're going to share the plot. Okay. All right. Okay. Getting it all sent. Technology is amazing. Okay, great. <laughs> um, and back to this. Okay, great. Um, so Eric, do you have any path maintenance um updates? I didn't do any for the past month. <clears throat> I don't anticipate unless it's a really warm day that any more are going to happen this year. Um, if we are going to get some surveying done, uh, it would be good to relay the one that's between. Let's see which way do the numbers go between two and three uh relay the path down that one just to set where it is uh it is mostly chipped already because that part of that is the thistle but just make sure that we've oh, got a yeah. clear cut path going down that one just for symmetry <laughs> yeah oh and i just realized too it's um we'll probably have a lot of path stuff to do once the mapping happens as well but um, just for thistle maintenance, that makes sense for Saturday. Yeah, the upper paths are pretty clean, uh, well-maintained. The lower paths, a lot of them have changed as people have moved in and moved out. And there's half paths and, you know, ones that are weirdly shaped. So uh, those could, after getting resurveyed, uh, get relayed with the, the strict uh, definition of the paths. Great. Fabulous. Um, all right. So now we can talk about the donation garden uh, a little bit. Um, we had quite a few volunteers show up at the end to help um, get it through the rest of the summer. Um, but I haven't heard much from them recently. Um, and like Mark just brought up, um, it's definitely been a struggling project for at least the past three summers. Um, so Mark raised his hand. You can go ahead and uh, start. Well, I was going to say, I, I, I walked by the donation garden, you know, many times it's on the way to mine. And as of late, as of the last month or two, uh, I, I see stuff that's growing there, but it hasn't been harvested. And I thought there was mm -hmm. some volunteer who was going to harvest that. So it could have been harvested, has really not been harvested and probably is yeah. unusable now or the animals have gotten to it. So that's distressing. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's just it gets overgrown quite quickly. The uh, there's not a good system for who's going to weed when. It's kind of like, well, do it when you can. It's just it's not doesn't have a strong plan for execution. <laughs> Maybe it's not possible. Everybody's very busy. I get it. And to have to take this on it is a lot. I know because I did it one the, last year, and uh, it's a lot. It can be a lot. And then the other thing is, is it producing? enough produce for its purpose, which is to donate to the community center. And I've always had been unsure about that, that given the size of it, I'm not just not sure that they, you can really get it as much as it's, you, you can give them something, but it's just not, it doesn't feel substantial. And maybe that doesn't matter. I know Stephen has thought it's just good that we do it because we want to um, have a good image in terms of community service. So anyway, it's it's tough <laughs> and it, it takes somebody you know to, to step up and say yeah i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna get people to work on it i'm gonna reach out or whatever it takes you know to make it happen and and get the food harvested and delivered i guess that's that's all for now it all makes a lot of sense to me um margie's next and then um eric well, I'm thinking in the notes about the meeting, I'll put out to people that we're still looking for someone to take over the donation garden. Um, and I don't know exactly how I put it, but not just haphazardly, but with some kind of regularity. And also ask for volunteers to help the person who's going to manage it. 
And maybe that can determine whether we continue or not. If we don't get anyone to take it over, it doesn't make much sense. Um, I also think we need to do a Sundance next season to make sure we have enough sun <laughs> and not so much rain because I think so many plots were negatively impacted by the weather this season. And I, I had nothing to donate. I had enough for myself and my family. And I usually have so much kale, but my kale is teeny weeny, didn't grow hardly at all. But um, yeah, maybe if we get some volunteers or someone who wants to really manage it, oversee it, let me say oversee it for community service or a couple of people to share it. I can put that out now and we'll see what happens by our, um, by next season. Um, Eric? And I also think that anything oh. we can donate is good. It doesn't have to be, you know, any certain quantity because gardening, even farming, it's, there's no guarantees. Eric, you can go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so uh, on that note of, you know, anything is good that we can donate um, and also that somebody might want to come in and take this on as a project to be able to choose what they're going to be farming. Um, if we don't need to have exciting vegetables, maybe we could angle that more towards having like very low maintenance vegetables. Uh, like Margie was saying, kale will grow very well this year. Well, you can drop it in, it just goes, you don't have to worry about it. And it's a bomb. Um, Maybe we could just do some low maintenance vegetables instead of trying to do tomatoes because tomatoes take some upkeep. You know, so um, if, if we do choose somebody to be in charge of the project, uh, that can fall on them to choose things that are working with the amount of attention that is uh, afforded to the garden. That makes sense. I think my thought on it is sort of, I think. It's, it's only been hard because the past few seasons we have recommended, oh, hi, Frank. Um, we have recommended that whoever runs it plant low maintenance vegetables. Um, I think that's why garlic and was planted and squash and things. Um, but the issue really is no one weeds it. And so those things don't grow. And then um, the harvesting at the end of the year to take stuff to the community garden or to the community center. And so my my thought might be we could open that plot up to be for gardeners, um, but uh, since we have a wait list, but that we had somebody on the committee in charge of d d collecting the extra produce from the whole garden. Like we would still donate to the community center, but instead of having a plot dedicated to that, we would just be more on top of collecting the, you know, excess stuff from all the, the plots, like Margie mentioned. Like if it's a good year, a lot of us do have a lot of extra. And that's what that cooler has always been for anyways. Um, Thank uh, you, Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Jonathan and then Karen and then Eric again. That was actually me. Folks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jonathan. Sarah, I was actually gonna bring up what you just did. This was our first time with the community garden. It's really easy to romanticize it until you get going and life happens and it's almost feels impossible to keep up. And I have to wonder if you've had three years of issues with a community plot. If there is a wait list, it's better to have the garden plot used by somebody who's at least trying to figure it out. And like you said get more people to donate what they do grow out of their private plots. I just wanted to throw a hand up and say I'm new, so I don't have a lot of, you know, history here, but to me, that seems like a better use for the plot than not really being used. Thank you, Caitlin. And uh, who did I say was next? Karen. So since we have people who would like a full plot, and we have some half plots. What if we next year tried doing a half plot donation garden and uh, let somebody use the whole plot 
who would like to use a whole plot? That's a good idea. Uh -oh. And then um, Eric again. Uh, we're still planning a school plot. There's still going to be others. Can hear you, Eric. Eric, you're, yeah, you just broke up quite a bit. I wonder. The uh, the four plots that are the thistle plots are those planning to be emptied next year? That is something we should talk about. I'll add that to the um, conversation because I don't know. Um, we okay. do need to make if decisions. If they are on going that. to be, if they're going to be empty, or if we, if they're going to be less used, if if we were to get donated some bags like the kind I use in my garden. Could we make those the donation plots since it's going to be virtually unused anyway and open up the donation plot that's now as an actual garden since it's actually gardenable? Hmm. Cool. I like that idea. Cool. Um, and then that, that's a good idea. Uh, that's a really good idea. See, Margie, you're up next. Um, I, I like the idea of using the, um, thistle dominated plots. I think using the half plot could be unfair to the person and the other half if it's not well maintained. Um, we would have to really make sure that's well maintained because the half, the two halves are so close together. If it gets all weedy, it's going to flow into the person's uh, and the other half. Um, and also, I wanted to say that at this time of year, there's usually very few open plots. By the time spring comes, there's more and more. And for a couple of years, we have not had a very long waiting list um, with, without available plots. There's usually, except for, for the, when the pandemic started, that's when we had like a waiting list of 25 and no plots. But a lot of people who joined at that time dropped out. I think the, the notion, it is kind of people do romanticize gardening and then when they get started and realize how much work it is, they do drop out. And I know Andre and Mark, they, they're friends of mine. And I know they dropped out because they were pretty discouraged. I think they assumed that it's always like it was this season. And I tried to tell them it was a very unusual season because of the rain. But by spring, it's almost always a guarantee that there's more open plots and people keep dropping out and the waiting list shrinks quite significantly, if not completely. So I don't think we have to worry about right now um, getting open getting open plots for people on the waiting list. There's only one person who won't who isn't going to be able to get a plot right now, and that's that's not a long waiting list at all. If, if I if well, I'm, uh, oh yes, yeah, Stephen, go ahead. Oh, you know, I've been trying to raise my hand. It never works for me, so. Oh, no. You'll just have to start shouting next. <laughs> that, that said, what Margie just said is absolutely correct. I mean, we have enough history. We know exactly what she said is correct. And I will add that um, because of that, I think we ought to build up the waiting list even more, uh, and particularly over the winter. I, for one, am planning to turn uh, I If we have someone willing to take it and no other available plot. I'm, I'm contemplating strongly that I, I will give my plot uh, up for that. I'm going to move a couple of the beds out over the winter. Um, mm -hmm. But she's right. I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 we tend, by the time we open the garden, there tends to be uh, availability. Um, better still, of course, is that what happened, as Marcy also reported, that people come in and get discovered or whatever. Uh, but uh, it'd be nice to have a, a list that people can kind of come right in. I mean, getting back to the donation garden, and you know, we went back and forth on this ad nauseum for years now. I think it's pretty evident that we don't have the wherewithal, okay, to really run a donation garden. 
whether it's a half plot, a full plot, two plot, or a quarter plot, third of a plot, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing that has to be done. And I strongly believe that because all of us, I think just Frank reported last time as an example, we go through the garden this time of year and it's just stuff that just, you know, people have just given up. And it's a shame that we see so much waste when it can go to people that can make use of it. And I think it's just better, you know, to direct our efforts, try to eliminate and make use of that waste and to cry, try to, uh, without success, uh, try to launch a donation garden. Better, as someone said earlier, just to make the, that donation garden a regular plot with the others, and at least hopefully it'll be used. But to set aside more plots at this point, for the notion of running any sort of donation garden next year is just, I think it will just be the same frustration that we've experienced now, probably for the fourth straight year. So that's my vote. Well, and I'm interested too, I'll, um, to say that if somebody should show up and is really passionate about doing some sort of community garden plot, I do really like the idea of what Eric said, as we're deciding these thistle buds, what we're going to do, we could just put a bunch of um, raised beds slash grow bags over there and start one up. Like if it turn if somebody next year shows up and is like, I really didn't do it last year, but I want to this year or something, but there's ways of spontaneously creating a donation garden too, um, if we need to. So I guess I'm gonna pose a motion to um, open up the donation plot. Um, does anyone second? I'll second, I'll, I'll second it. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone adamantly opposed? <laughs> I'm what was that? Mildly opposed. Mildly opposed. <laughs> Margie, what'd you say? We can, um, oh, Margie, it's muted or something. I can't hear you. I'm just wondering what, um, so that's a, the donation plot is A5. I think it's like A2. Oh, A5. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the donation plot's A5. And separately, I that did kind of get me thinking about, um, I'll just lay this as a quick thought, and if we need to circle back, we'll do it um, as part of new business. But um, we, we should create a game plan when people leave plots or if no one takes over one to make sure and plant um, cover crops be it buckwheat or late late summer, um, other vari varieties of things to keep um, keep thistle or other weeds down, like ragweed. Um, awesome. So that was a great okay. discussion. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. That was awesome. And um, uh, oh, Margie, um, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, now we have three people in two plots, what's a half a plot. So if I tell these people they can have a plot now. Who can, who shall I tell them to contact? Who can meet them? Oh, it's still me. It's fine. Yeah. Because I, I don't have the time to do that. No, I'm from, that's definitely part of what I felt, feel like is my job for, from here on okay. out. Definitely just in them. Tell them to contact you, Sarah. Yeah. And I'll show them the two that are open. There's three now open. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. And a half. Because Alyssa's was a full. Excuse me? Alyssa's was a full plot. Yes, Alyssa, okay. um, Andre, and now the donation plot. Great. Okay, I'll contact those people. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Karen with pollinator updates. So with the pollinator garden, uh, I just haven't done much this month. I have uh, stuff I can get done still in November. 
and it's just mainly at this point um uh making sure the pathways have uh mulch on them so we don't get weeds and filling up uh what the new beds will be so that that's breaking down over the winter for next year do you want any of that to be part of the work day closing uh, no that's okay i mean i have a weed whacker I've, i have a nice little electric one so i just go in and do it and then put some chips in there great yeah awesome cool um so i'll uh update about volunteer hours um deb sent um another collected spreadsheet um we've had some people do some stuff this month i know not every gardener is doing like their full amount of hours but i do think it's been a pretty good year for vo people volunteering um obviously we just talked about the donation garden was struggling but i feel like a lot of other projects got done and we've had like a pretty nice looking garden this year um does anybody want to offer like critiques of the system for us to think about um over the winter i'd like to thank deb again for doing that yeah truly amazing so so great and we'll send we'll send deb the recording so so it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that mark right yeah um, well I, I noticed on the list that maybe you just said that i wasn't paying attention uh that uh some folks haven't completed their four hours on her list so is there any follow-up on that or what do we think about that it's tough for me to say i feel like we've never come up with good consequence except that maybe maybe the most i guess maybe it'd be good to say you haven't completed your hours like it is required um i feel like we haven't come up with a good set of penalties sort of similar to the weed inspection it's kind of like just a reminder to people that you have to do this to be a part of this community um but i don't know if there's consequences what do you guys think well the most obvious i think, I think there, need, there need to be your go ahead, go ahead Stephen. i'm sorry no, what i was going to say well, and, and you've raised this we talked about it a little bit last month but the most obvious one is at the end of the year when people uh, or I should say the beginning of the year when people put in a plot if they're if there's someone who just never met the the volunteer requirement, I mean, I I don't know if they should uh, be offered a plot back in if if there's other available plot holders. I, I think you have to be in good standing when you are not. That's the consequence. Yeah, in in Northampton, if you don't complete your community service hours, you cannot renew your plot. Um. It's the easiest way of doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, I, I, I think people will step up if they know if they know that's the consequence. If indeed they want to have a plot the next year. Because we didn't lay that out at the beginning of the season, we can lay that out for next season and say next season, right. people will not be able to renew their plots for 2025 if they do not complete their community service hours. I can put that out. Yeah, that would be great. Well, that, that should be in the, in the, uh, in the guidelines. Yeah. 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 That needs to be in writing in the guidelines. I'm, I'm writing some notes on the guidelines right now. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, would you guys do you guys think it's necessary for me to email the gardeners who haven't fulfilled their hours this month and say yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, i'll probably just frame it as either come to the work day on saturday or come do some you know like i'm sure there's other tidying that could be done but you know at least let them know next year you won't be allowed to like continue to have a plot if you don't fulfill these hours because there's just not a lot of time for them to make up for it 
but um Well, yeah. there's this that. What, Stephen? No, I was say there's this Saturday. You know, they could take care yes. of us. I mean, yeah. Coming down and helping out. Yeah, I'll definitely try to email them tomorrow. Um, I just uh, am concerned the people, you know, might say, oh, I can't, you know it's too short notice or something but definitely i'll push them to do that and then um uh john and caitlin sorry and i joined late um from getting off work but is this saturday the work day it is, yeah. it is. but you guys have done like a billion hours of community service. i don't even know if we logged them i just said to john i'm like john did we log anything we did um what time does the workday start on Saturday? Um, we will talk about that in just a second. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. I've, I've, it's, it's funny how things are organized. But I will also say I try to communicate with Deb when people, like there's a couple gardeners who email me separately because they struggle with the um, spreadsheet. So if you guys even want to just email me the hours you've done, I'll send it to Deb as well. We'll and I, who knows, updated. I know we... I, I think we just like forgot to ever no, enter I, anything. Up. I know you? we. I know we put some. Okay. Hours. All right. Sorry. We're probably okay. <laughs> well, I'll. You know, like I said, I've I've been there with you for many of the hours, so um, you're all set in my book. <laughs> um, okay. Um. Just so that all sounds good for volunteer hour conversation and um, next steps. Okay. Um, so we have done some gardener feedback in and out. Anyone else want to add some notes or um, things to the agenda or just general comments? Uh, I have, I have something just from walking around and looking at gardens. <clears throat> um, and I don't even want this to be grandfathered in, but uh, there's a plot with grass planted in it, and I I want to put something in the guidelines that you you can't plant grass. <laughs> it it it's or ornamental grasses. I I I just feel it, it, nobody's ever done it, and I really I really want to prevent it from happening again. Explain your thinking why that's should be yeah. right. Uh, because if someone leaves it, then we have to pull the turf up out of the plot. Unless they're going to pull the turf up when they leave. And I have a hard time imagining that would happen. Maybe it would. But uh, and, and this, you know, this is just I'll just throw this out there. We can talk about it or, or we don't have to talk about it now, but you know, I, I kind of look at the plots as mainly for growing food and not for like a landscaping project. And sometimes uh, just th there's one plot in particular where there's grass planted and I just, I just mo being one who mows, it, it's just kind of anti-thema to me. I, 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 and I, I've just seen so many plots left over the years that I that to me is if if that plot was left and the grass wasn't taken out that it, it's it's gonna take an effort to get it out. That's all. So I, I just we could talk about this in the spring before we you know we do the final on um, finalize the the guidelines. But it's something I certainly want to have. We don't have to just talk about it now, but in the spring I definitely want to I want to revisit this. Right, I'll add it to, um, we'll discuss adding grass, ornamental grasses to the band plant list in the spring. Any other comments or ideas? All right. Um, so 
well, let's just talk about the work day. Um, I missed last meeting, so I, you know, I'm not sure um, what all was covered exactly. I, in fact, I just didn't even notice what time we said it was going to start. So what time is it on Saturday? Did you guys come up with a time? My recollection from the discussion was that there are going to be some people come in the morning, some uh, of us, that is, and some in the afternoon, so that we, I think we were saying that we would start it certainly by 10. Um, 10, okay. With some other folks, I think, uh, Margie, maybe you were one. Someone was talking about coming in the afternoon by 2. Yeah, I can, I can, I can go in the afternoon. Well, yeah, I, I would be morning because I got to take somebody to the airport in the afternoon. Uh, Mark? Well, yeah, what needs to be done specifically? I, I know hoses need to be brought in, and I, I usually, I have a, usually have a running <clears throat> Saturday morning thing from 9.30 to 10.30, but I can come after that, or I can start bringing some hoses in tomorrow if that's helpful. But what else needs to be done? <clears throat> I, I, I'm probably going to end up mowing everything over the weekend. Will so. you need help? Uh, maybe I just, it, it's, and it won't be something I'd be doing on Saturday, probably a Sunday. I'm going to go up there because I want to, I really want to try and mow stuff down. Um, some of the other things that were just brought up in this meeting for to do's, um, the tool inventory. Um, so yep. make sure that gets done. Um, and then also, uh, Eric brought up the, the path and the, in between the thistle The thistle maintenance, um, being that that's all put to bed. Um, anything else? Jonathan needed the uh, string trimmer, uh, the repair. Oh, maybe yeah. Maybe Jonathan yeah. can talk to you, Frank, about that. Then, okay. Flurry equipment. Yeah, I'm going to take the, once I finish mowing, um, then I'm going to take the, 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 uh, the lawnmower up to get service, so I'll take the string trimmer as well. Great. One in particular is in bad shape. Okay. Awesome. So Margie, in the uh, meeting notes, do you, well, if you don't mind mentioning the workday and maybe I'll send a separate workday email just to make sure everyone sees it yeah. in bold that it's happening. And I'll, um, yeah. To, to Maybe I'll buy some apples hurt. from next door. Sorry, Margie. What was that? No, two reminders couldn't hurt. Yeah. And I'm going to get uh, some incentive. I'll splurge on some um, cider and apples and maybe apple cider donuts Ooh, to have. I'm coming. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because oh. it just seems silly not to do it with the orchard right there. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So, so two sessions, ten o'clock and two o'clock. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And how long will we be there? I can be there till dark if necessary. I guess it just depends what needs to be done. I'm I'm happy to stay till two, and I can update you what still needs to be done. Um, okay. And we can do it that way. Um, I might add to the agenda, like doing something to. Uh, if no one's taken over whatever plots, maybe we'll tidy some of the abandoned plots or unused plots um, a little bit. That's not a bad idea, sir. So I'll, hopefully those folks especially, will get back. Yeah, especially the donation garden. Yeah. So just show up and then we can do what we know to be done. And if there's other things that look obvious, we can dig in and do them. Yeah. Since we don't have a long list, it doesn't seem like. Yeah, but things always come up. Sure. Okay. Um, so that's the work day and sounds like it'll be really nice. And um, what else do we have written down here? Oh, the, um, there was a couple emails already exchanged about this, but I just want to make sure. <laughs> Um, Karen brought up that we need to make the uh, city website have proper contact information. So um, Margie said she's already on there, but we can make sure I'll reach out to whoever to make sure it's more clear. 
and somehow access to the oh, guidelines. There's a link to the application and then my name's on the application. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's what pe the thing is, it says make sure that you know that there's an open plot before you fill out the application. So maybe we could just add, uh, you yeah. know, a sentence making it more clear who they contact to find out is there an open plot. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Right. So, so that's not just on the application. That's on the website. Make sure you know there's no open plot. It, it, yeah, it says very clearly. Make sure you know that there's an open plot. There's not a whole lot of information on the East Hampton government page. It just links to the application. Well, I'll reach out to the city and and put Margie's email on there and clarify that statement. And then um, I can even draft a little paragraph for you guys uh, and see, if, you know, see if they can add that to the website. And I'll make sure you guys read it before it's posted. Um, and I'll put the guidelines to make sure there's somehow a link to the guidelines, too. Yeah, good catch, Karen. Yeah. Truly. Great. So, and then the uh, oh yeah. So I so I have a question. Um, so I know Sarah, you said that you have um, a link that's easy to use to get to the guidelines, the guidelines and rules um, without needing a password. But I actually didn't see that on the copies of the meeting minutes and agenda that I got. And I didn't see a link for it anywhere. If you and that so in the email, yeah. the first one I sent last week, and this one, there it's called Garden Practices and Guidelines, and it's an editing document. Um, in the email I just sent, it's like it's not in the attachments segment of the email, but in the reading part. Um, there's five uh, links. Yes, in I gray. saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So the right. fourth one down is copy of gardening practices and guidelines, and it's it's set up so that anyone who has link can comment on it. So we have a live conversation with which to uh -huh. edit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so if somebody did take that copy and edit it, does the edit show up? as an edit in a different color or something? Yeah, it does. And I also have to approve all the edit or I get a notification when someone adds a comment and I think all the comments are visible, but if I was to like say yes to the edit, then it would actually change the document, but it doesn't, for, at this point, I think it just shows it as a comment on the um, document. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's not on the East Hampton site, right? That's not on the town of right. And so, people who, like, for example, the woman this past year who wanted to, um, who just lived down the road, but she just happened to live over the Northampton town line. She wanted a plot, and we were saying no, she can't have it because she's over the town line in Northampton. A link to these rules and practices if she could have read that i mean she would have seen that um if there's nobody else in line she would have been eligible we should have been considering her later in the summer when we had an opening there so no. a link that's what i'm saying a uh, somehow a link so that i i know that when i go to a new area I go looking for community gardens and I'm looking for information about how they're set up, what's going to be involved for me. So a link somehow so that somebody who's looking for a plot can see what's involved for them would be useful. Stephen, were you going to? Yeah. No, no, I said that. I think uh, Karen, correct me if I'm wrong when we last discussed it, but. The problem isn't how close to the garden they live. The issue is whether they're an East Hampton resident. 
because right, but that's it, it's required. It says, so, yeah, but it says in the rules and practices that if no one left in East Hampton <clears throat> wants it, uh, she should have been eligible for it. Yeah, I don't think that's well, the bad I, I, I don't the think state. we had any other thoughts. At well, the time that she, she was asking, but later in the summer, Margie, remember we did have an open plot. And I emailed you saying, what about this woman who was just over the town line? At that mm. time, there was no one on the waiting list. And we could have no. offered it to her at that time. And we didn't have her contact information anymore. Well, but all the plots did eventually fill up with East Hampton residents. So that's the tricky part to me, because if you give it to a non-resident and then two days later, there's three more East Hampton residents interested. So we, I think we need to have like a date um, by which if no East Hampton residents have taken all the plots, then we can consider someone else. Right. But, going, but, but it's possible that we wouldn't have an East Hampton resident and it's better to have someone in there working the plot who's, who's wanting to rather than have it sitting growing weeds. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, go ahead. I would add the caveat that they can have it for that season, but they can't, they can't renew it. Well, we could say yeah. that. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 you know, that's to be clear, and I think that policy that you just said makes sense, Karen. But um, that's what what Frank has said is what I understand to be the policy. It is far better to have someone in to take over a plot that would be otherwise go to weed or whatever, no matter mm -hmm. where they live. If there's no right. camp available resident, but every time right. we start up in the spring, right, priority goes to East Hampton residents. I think so, I, so. That's what you were just saying, Frank. Right. Uh, so the folks that can kind of come in if they're non-residents during the summer because they're taking over a plot for which there's no other East Hampton resident available, they can come in for that. But when it comes to the next year, if there's uh, a you know uh, you know uh, East Hampton resident available and uh, the, their plot would become uh, available to them. Um, you know, that same plot, and those folks can kind of come in the same way again, which is we do need a relief core. You know, that's, we know that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can offer that to people. I think that's what you were just saying, Frank. Yeah. yeah. I like the idea of having oh, a separate yeah. list for the, these emergency moments that have, you know, someone like the woman who emailed or, you know, people already who have lots who are like, I will step in you know, like if we could have a list listserv for in those moments when a plot's abandoned and there's no wait list, I think that would be awesome. Um, I guess my have, other. We have, oh we yeah, have Margie. To decide on a on a we need parameters for it though because people East Hampton residents sign up into the summer, so yeah. yeah. You know, it's like I I'm not sure how we determine when it's time to get somebody else in there when it's time when it's okay to let a non-resident if we're going to have that rule personally i don't care if someone you know from who lives down the road and isn't a resident wants to garden and there's an open plot but if we're going to abide by that um guideline we need to have some kind of parameters yeah, but I think it's a mistake to sit around waiting to see if maybe an East Hampton person will step up when we have somebody who says that they're already interested. That's what happened this summer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mark, we, didn't have, we didn't have any open plots, though. There was, was a still. point where there was there was a point where there was a space open and we could have considered this woman it was after the summer had begun we could have asked her if she was interested at that point and we didn't because it was uh, because you said you didn't have her contact information anymore yeah and also there were no plots that were not worked 
this season, every plot was filled. That if there was an open plot at that moment, it eventually got worked. It wasn't like, oh, we right. had this plot there and it never got worked. Yeah, but the point I'm making is to sit around waiting if a plot becomes open and we have somebody that we know is interested then we can offer it but to sit around saying well maybe in a couple of weeks an east hampton person will say oh now i'm interested i don't think we should wait like that you know the yeah. weeds grow too fast no, but that, that's why i'm saying mm -hmm. a, a parameter we need like if okay if nobody signs up by I don't know, arbitrarily, um, May 31st, then it's open for, for anybody. That's, that's, that's too early. No way. Yeah. Well, it was hypothetical. Uh, Steven's been trying to say something. So that was arbitrary. I just threw the date out there yeah. as an example. I, I, I think largely Karen, Karen has, this, uh, has allayed the concern that you have, which is anyone can always sign into the waiting list. No matter what month it is, if you're interested uh, as an East Hampton resident to joining the community garden, you can join the waiting list at any time. And you can get a plot if there's one available. If there's one that's not available at the time in which you join one, the Karen's larger point that a, and a plot becomes available, but there's no East Hampton resident who is on the waiting list to do it, then we, we have this, call it whatever, if you want to, a relief list which is, yeah, people can come in, they won't have to pay anything, uh, and they will, you know, help each other, help us and help them by, by uh, you know, farming it uh, and through the rest of that, that garden year. Uh, and then, um, again, um, if there are uh, eligible East Hampton residents who are on a waiting list, that plot would become available to them. So we're not hanging around, Margie, we don't need to hang around and to wait whether or not an East Hampton resident is going to come in. If, if at the time in which there's an available plot and um, someone can come off the relief list to take it, and there's no East Hampton resident on the waiting list, they get it. We don't have to wait around. It makes it easier for you, okay? You don't have to hold anything open. Then they, then they can join, and maybe they might get that plot, that same plot, you know, in the next year. But, but I do I mean, what you would, and, uh, uh, I mean, there's a consistency between uh, what you were talking about uh, um, and what you were both talking about and what Karen, the not, oh. not gives us. So then it makes sense to have two waiting lists. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. But I, I do think um, maybe still including some dates might be good. And it might align with our earlier conversation about setting some actual penalties. So if when Frank does the first weed check of the season, you know, picking up the pace on telling people if they are abandoning their plot early on and they're not actually maintaining it, we have a list of people, you know, who can move in and um, kind of building some structure, I think, around both of these lists and some of our other like concerns might work really well. And my other thought is that this might, if we're comfortable, this might be a really good conversation for the spring Yep. where yeah. we can really iron out the guidelines when we send them out yeah. with the um, application. But I will make sure there's a guidelines link right now on the website regardless. But um, as far as maybe really fleshing out the details of this it might be better to do in the spring um, Idea. but does anyone want to say anything else really quick yes i would like to point out that as long as i've been doing this and i've lost track on how long maybe four years three four five years i don't even know there's only been two non-residents who wanted a plot so it's almost a moot point. It's good to have, you know, guidelines for it. So we have everything set up and we're not like, oh, gee, what do we do now? But it's, I don't think it's something that's going to um, happen very often. But it's good to be prepared for. I, I do yeah. agree. 
What's next? <laughs> All right. So the next thing is also kind of discussion heavy, maybe, um, but well, I'll try to do it fast because so, we're running past, um, we're reaching our hour and a half mark. Um, but the mapping project, oh. I, I reached out to my friend who's a land surveyor is not going to be available until like February, I would think, or early, you know, and late winter. So, um, and he would be a free option. Um, free is good. Free is good. It's the best. But um, yeah. someone who Mapping was really busy. Oh, what was that? Mapping in the snow. Yeah, that's. Oh, I'd have to wait till it's not snowy. Um, but then uh, the other option is I did reach out to. Um, <clears throat> A friend of a friend who is a like professional um garden designer and he does mapping as well it's less precise than a surveyor would do but he would still be able to create a map for us and you know lay everything out it just wouldn't be based on like you know the coordinates of the the planet kind of the way land surveyors do so it'd be a little more um relaxed but he wouldn't be free um he would cost around thirty dollars an hour and he thought it would probably be around like three hundred dollars so that would be um that side of the three hundred to four hundred dollars um, that would be the other option he would be able to do it like soon i i missed this discussion i think it started at a meeting i wasn't at um why do we need to do the mapping we need we need to reset all the boundaries margie things things have crept there's been creeping going on and because of been, that one garden that no no no, no, no. we're talking that. about multiple gardens and we it's been 11 years since all those lines were done and the the gardens have gone through multiple owners and boundaries have have inched here and there and i think it's just good to do i i would really vote to do a real survey if we can get it and 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 uh because it doesn't have to be done right away this is something that could be done in the spring and and uh the ground won't be frozen then either i mean I, yeah and now i mean we're we're gonna be up there working i just think it's it'd be really good to get a good precise reading again and then just have them and and let the gardeners know this is happening and there's going to be kind of a reset um but i i just it's something that and then we mark all the boundaries are marked there's no there's no mistaking where your plot is and uh mm -hmm. and and then and, and then we would need to decide okay what are we going to use as boundary markers that would probably be yeah. you know another thing and we've talked about some of that already but karen said she had some piping and stuff but you know we can we can go there or not but i i you know sarah that's awesome thank you for for kind of digging for that because to get a real surveyor in there that that's pretty cool yeah I, it's I think so the, easy for this type of project for a land surveyor it's like yeah nothing. right <laughs> there's, there's no curbs there's no traffic yeah um, and, <laughs> no and c1 all the rebar and c1 is is still in its original spot so they could actually probably go off of that heck yeah and sorry karen you were gonna say something. oh i was just saying i think since it's not really relevant until next early next summer anyway yeah if yeah. we could get a, a professional surveyor to do it get that done and then when everybody starts we where our boundaries are, and there's no questions. Yep. Um, Any other thoughts? Yeah, I'm also thinking like, because like I'm doing a lot of work right now in my plot, and I would not be happy if someone came and said, oh, you have to eliminate two feet from one side. So it, it's not going to be two feet, me, Margie. It might be two inches, okay. you know. Oh. All right, but let me just finish. So sure. I would suggest that if your garden neighbor doesn't really care, 
then you could keep the border, but you don't necessarily have to do anything about it until that gardener has left the garden, left the plot. If it's fine would, with you, the gardener. I would think but once the boundaries are redrawn, the agreements between gardeners is fine, hypothetically. It's just the issue has been when those gardeners leave, sometimes the new, like just that information doesn't get shared when a new person shows up. So we'll just need to be more clear. Like if someone leaves to tell the person next to them, whatever agreements you had with this gardener over, there's a new gardener moving in. These are their boundaries. They might do something completely different. Um, but this is like their 20, you know, making sure we're better as a committee about keep that information like shared, I guess. Because oh, it happened happened to me in the Northampton garden that one year I planted my peas and then they came and told me, oh, you're like four inches over the line. And these were new gardeners and their plot was completely overgrown. And they made me move my peas, which had already been planted and were sprouted. And they were brand new. And it was so overwhelming to them. They didn't even garden the area that they made me move out of. So an experienced gardener would have probably said, oh, yeah, it doesn't really matter that couple of inches because you've got so much else to deal with if it comes to it. And it probably wouldn't come to it until the peas were harvested and I could pull them out and say, OK, here, take your four inches. But um, I just I coming to that place yeah. where it happened and it was a pain in the neck. I think the issue is that, like, I think as a committee, we need to come up with more rules that are based on, like, our guidelines and based on how we want to evolve them. But to try to keep the um, the case by case conversations smaller, because this is a committee, it's, it's not one person. And we each of us has an entirely different perspective on gardening. So it is like as much as like that would I'd probably agree with you about the peas. Like as a committee, we would, you know, might not all agree on it. And so that's when we would turn to the guidelines and say, well, the guidelines say this, so the person has to, you know, it, it'll help us make regrettable decisions that are, you know, are not regrettable, but like maybe harder decisions that are based on just like, you know, trying to keep things fair and even versus like gardener op gardening opinions. Um, just because I do think that's a challenge that we run into as gardeners running a community space is sometimes it's not about what we think should be gardened. It's more about what the community needs. So. Um. So the, it, well, to everybody, I mean, if we, if we are able to get the surveying done early in the spring before planting season, which would be, that would be the ideal, uh, then you know, we could avoid some kind of a situation like what you're talking about too, Marge. Totally. I support that as well. Yeah, yeah. Marge, you're, none of us should it be penalized because of a, a survey that comes in. If anything, you'd have to wait till the following year to implement it if, if we can't get it early enough, but hopefully early enough. My only concern is people are planting garlic soon, and that would be the only plant that I think would come up as like, uh oh, your garlic's over the line. But I feel like it's less people running into the the paths and more about people creating paths. It's less that people are move like erasing paths and moving towards like part like land that's not theirs. It's more that people are creating paths and making certain you know plots smaller. So yep. Um, but uh, Karen. Well, the thing, the other thing that I had been thinking of was I would like to put perennials in some perennials like comfrey. I have horseradish and I like those at the edge. So I'm, that's where I've put them is at the edge. And I don't, you know, because they're getting settled, uh, I don't want to have to move them. So that was why I had asked at an earlier point, how how much of a wiggle is there between the, the boundaries, do we think? If it's just inches, it's okay. You know, a foot might um, cut my comfrey in half, but just inches uh, shouldn't matter. 
I'm going to guess the boundary movement will probably be inches. I think the biggest drama is felt in the paths that have been established mm -hmm. that look like their community garden paths that are actually just old, you know, agreement paths. And um, I'm hoping that since I emailed that map, people have looked to see where their gardens should connect to the other plots around them and can start prepping for that change. But I think I would think that it's not going to be that dramatic as far as the other two sides, those changing. But. Okay. That's so, oh. um, Awesome. And we can definitely, if it comes like after the survey, if it seems like a lot of people's things are, are going to get cut in, a, cut in half, I'm happy to get another, you know, we'll talk about it in the spring and I'm happy to ask the surveyor to kind of adjust. Like if we need to adjust because it's ruining like a whole se section for some reason, you know, we can decide as a committee if there's a huge um, mapping thing we discover that we need to change the map for yeah but that shouldn't be stuff is not too far off from the original map and the original dimension so uh, i really don't think it's gonna, it's not going to be some big giant dramatic thing it just it's it's kind of getting back to what you said sarah i mean there's people who have just made pathways where you know you can make all the pathways you want in your own plot it's just when they start going over that boundary into somebody else's area then you know that's going to disappear you know and you know and again i think you know we get into these agreements then it becomes an issue when people leave and then who's going to police that you know and that's that's the one nice thing you know i mean robert frost said fences make good neighbors so you know there's there's some truth to that and i think just maintaining it and um as 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 much as we can by the dimensions that are in the original map i just think that's that's where we need to do a reset and you know if i got to dig something up and move it then so be it but um you know i i think too just establishing the borders on the 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 real corridors is another important thing as well um karen yeah, karen yeah so were we going to at some point discuss the rules? Is that why uh, that has been added to the agenda? Yeah, I was gonna, I, I guess my concern right now might be that the meeting has run a little long. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe we'll prioritize going through the agenda and altering it in the spring, but I'm happy to take some, you know kind of like with the mapping discussion we could talk about it a little bit and then table the finalizing process for the spring uh, i'm happy i have some things that i'd like to discuss about it but we have run late so i'm happy to discuss it in the spring um okay uh, just um so that copy that you put on there um that's the original copy that, it's that a copy of are. the original. It's not the like the original document. I think is we're not edit like there's still an original. This is like an editing version. Okay. Um, that we can, it, yeah. It, it, this has not been edited yet. I think we edited a couple things on it at some point because I remember. Let me see. So I'd like to see the original. With the with no edits on it. Sure, I can. I think. Um, oh my gosh. Um, well, so I'm not distracted. I will. I'll include the original and an email to the committee along with the editing version. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think the only thing we might have edited. I'm thinking is. Um, distinguishing the path after the path conversation at the beginning of the summer. Yeah, nothing got added about that. Okay, then that's just then all of that's still just in notes on the editing document then. Because I think we just haven't had 
the presence of mind do a full let's re rehash out the guidelines mm -hmm. with making our edits finalized then mm -hmm. um, yeah. so you'll if you want me, yeah if you you'll want to add your comments now so we don't forget them that would be great or send an email so that we can have them those ideas ready to go in the spring that would be mm -hmm. awesome okay but so i'd like to compare the original with the edit the editable version yeah. that you sent yeah cool okay awesome anything else do you folks send out like a guideline near near this time around how to close your garden up we have sometimes um i don't know margie if you have an old email that you could forward because I, I do think we sent one out last year about ideas for how to close up um the yeah Alyssa wrote something up and we sent that out i'll see if i can find it awesome thank you and, what and if, if you come on Saturday, I, we'll all be there and it, we can definitely give advice um, to you. I'm sorry to say Saturday's tough, but I'll, I'm going to try to come from 10 to 11 just as I'm hosting. And this guy's ditching me while I'm hosting my family. So I'm trying to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he looks really upset about it. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. He's really sad. <laughs> Maybe bring your family, show them the garden. Oh my you know, God. That might be a garden. great idea to get my family for a bit. Maybe I'll do it. Okay. They no. could get a lot of work done for you pretty fast, I'm sure. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. So um, we'll just look at the calendar for the spring um, for our next meeting. Did we want to meet in February or March? Um, I, March. Yeah, we usually meet in March. Okay, and we'll just, and we start communicating. Ted's gonna send out a budget in February. Um, okay, so um, March 7th is the first um, Thursday. At seven. And I'll get that. Um, written down and um, email about in the spring. Um, awesome. So um, any any final thoughts, concerns, questions? Well, I think we we had some things we threw out for new business, but I would say postpone them till the, the spring meeting unless there's oh. something urgent. Just yeah, I did forget the one the one thing. Can wait. Yeah, Margie? I'll, I'll I can wait till you go. I just wanted to say a couple of real quick things. I'll just say that I'll move it to the spring meeting is talking about making a sign due to um, some stolen produce and, and other such uh, missing, missing stuff from people's plots. Um, wow. Yeah. I just wanted to say that there definitely are crazy jumping worms in our garden. And um, the, someone else in the Northampton Garden has had success by putting in crushed oyster shells and biochar. And also I read that um, black used tea leaves, you can put them around your plant and they keep the worms away from those, those roots. And I'm keeping on researching this, but they're, they're definitely there. But another thing is that I'm seeing babies. And maybe that's a good thing because the babies don't usually hatch until the spring. So maybe a lot of the babies are hatching now and there'll be fewer eggs to hatch in the spring, which could be a good thing. So maybe this long, um, warm season and then a sudden frost. Because today I was out there digging and there were a bunch of them and they're dead or very slow. So I, they're not laying eggs anymore. So maybe, maybe there won't be too many. But they're there. I hope, I hope it's true. 
And maybe we'll um, add that to the budget in the spring discussion if we need to invest in some of these ideas for how to. Well, there's there's something that keeps them away. It's, it's the kind of mulch that they use on golf courses. It's tea something. I forgot what it's called, but I, I have it somewhere. But we can talk about it in the spring. I don't want to keep this going and going. Um, yep. and you can do jumping worm research over the winter, Margie. Oh, I've done yeah. enough. I have what, it all right. What fun. <laughs> Hire a consultant. <laughs> what we need is recipes. We need recipes to eat them. Yeah. Oh, there's an idea. Extra protein. <laughs> God. Um, yeah. <laughs> on the water, folks, on the water, the water department will uh, will start turning things off beginning Monday the 6th. So it could be as early as Monday the 6th, but it most likely will be next week. Okay. Right. So we'll pull the hoses uh, on Saturday, and that'll be it for water, basically. Not that anybody needs it unless it's washing off your vegetables that you've harvested. You just need to rinse the lawnmower. That's why I want to get everything mowed this weekend. Good. Amazing. Well, this is what, Marty? Daylight saving. Daylight is saving it? Saturday night. Oh. Good. Better, all back an hour. Yeah, it's when I work. Yeah, it's going to affect us on Sunday. Right. Okay, well, uh, um, this was a great meeting. Got a ton done, and I'm excited for the spring. And I'll see some people on Saturday. Yep. Um, Saturday. Does, um, I'll make a motion. Do we need a motion to end the meeting? Thank you. Motion to adjourn second. All right, Saturday. all in favor? Aye. Aye. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.